that car, that car tried to kill me, guys. So, if you've been following along, you know all about the Corvette C4 and what I've had to go through to uh, get it to where it's at. But I'm glad to say that the battle is almost done. And after all the headache it put me through, I'm actually very fortunate. I learned a lot and I can add complete rebuild of a LT1 Chevrolet motor to my resume because that's basically what I had to do. But that wasn't the plan. You know, the plan was just gonna be a cam, heads, and really that was it. Where I really got tripped up was the, here, let's go ahead and open the hood. Hey Jeff, you probably should have done that before you started shooting the video. So, the plan was just to cam it and that turned into a cam and heads, but where I really, really got tripped up was the funky harmonic balancer on this car. It's pressed on and it's really hard to get to. There's a big cross member right in front of it. And for whatever reason, and I've seen a lot of people that have been able to handle them with the engine in the car. I couldn't, I tried everything it was laughing at the pullers I was using. It was bending them. It was not coming off. There was no way I did. I followed every trick. I could not get the balancer itself. So there's a hub on the crank and then the balancer is on the hub. And the trick is you pull the balancer and then you use a puller on the hub. Could not get those separated. Tried everything. I mean, it literally, I tried for a week with everything that everybody recommended it just would not come off. So at that point, I was kind of screwed because I had already sent the heads off to be done. And it wasn't really something I could just put it back together because the heads were gonna be made to fit the cam that I was gonna use. There's no way to get the cam off or out without getting that balancer off. So. I ended up having to pull the motor and that in itself was a whole nother chore because think of it, I've already, I already pulled the heads off and most of the time when you pull a motor, you run bolts in the heads and then you use that as your, your pinch, your, your pickup points to pull it out. So I had to come up with this crazy system of straps and let me just say it was not OSHA approved to get the motor out. I had to use <laughs> motorcycle straps, prayers, everything I could do to get the motor out. Got the motor out and then uh, started started going through the motor and that's when more, oh my goodness, maybe I shouldn't be making this video because it's bringing back all these terrible memories. That's when more problems persisted. We could not get the uh, balancer out of it. So I had to make a, I had to get, that the problem is with an LT1, it's kind of a weird puller to pull it out. The way that the motor's set up, the where, where the crank is, where the threads are, you can't just use a normal puller as we found out. So I actually broke off a bolt before uh, we even started pulling that off. I broke, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting this all confused. I was able actually to pull it, pull off, pull it when I got it. I was able to pull the puller. <laughs> Let me start over. I was able to pull the harmonic balancer using this puller. I had to get a specific puller for the LT1. Oh, thank God I just got through that. The problem was when I was putting the, I took the motor all apart. Now mind you, you guys that know me know that I'm a wizard with motorcycles. There's pretty much nothing these days that a motorcycle can throw at me that I can't accomplish. V8 engines was a whole new game for me. This was my first go around doing what I was doing on this motor. So I took, I had to I took the whole motor apart. I figured, you know, I've got the engine out of the car. Why not throw bearings in it? Why not throw rings in it? So that was a whole nother set of lessons that I had to, to learn. And I will be the first person to tell you 
and at this point, probably the only person to tell you, because I haven't really told many people, but I'm the first person to tell, tell you I did not know what I was doing when I was taking it apart. Engines, yeah, it's just a V8 engine, but you know, there's a lot of things to know about taking a motor apart. There's a lot to know about putting them back together as far as sequence, as far as torque settings, as far, there's a wealth of stuff that I just flat out didn't know. I know now, I've paid the price, I know now, but I didn't know then, and that just cost me a whole nother set of scripts. And mind you, again, it was not the plan. It was just, I was just kind of going through this as it was dealt to me. So first go around, I put new bearings on the crank and on the connecting rods and was having a lot of trouble turning it. And I didn't realize, you know, it wasn't frozen, but it was a lot of work to, turn it with the breaker bar at the crank. I ended up breaking off a bolt inside the crank. Fortunately, I was able to get that bolt out and found out it's because I put the motor back together incorrectly. I, I put the connecting rod caps, I didn't put them back on correctly. Fortunately, solved that later and we'll get to that. But the connecting rod caps were not on correctly. I didn't torque them in the proper sequence. So that's why I was having it kind of binding up. And fortunately, bearings are cheap and they're available. So talk to a couple of close friends that really know motors and explain to them what's going on. And they told me what I did wrong. And I realized I just needed to go back to square one. So I had had the motor basically together, the short block together, took it all apart, took everything, went down to the, the bare block and started over. First thing I did was I honed, honed out the cylinders and then went through and I was able to match up the correct connecting rod, uh, the, I'm sorry, the connect, the, the correct crankshaft cap with the, uh, with the specific, I'm sorry, it was not the, bear with me guys, this whole thing was so confusing and I'm just now recalling it. The bearing cap, uh, the, main, uh, the crankshaft caps I got correctly because they're numbered. There's no way to really screw those up unless you're a total idiot. The problem that I ran into is I mixed up the connecting rod caps. So when I took it apart the second time, I was able to look at like the castings and the markings and what have you and figure out which connecting rod cap went to which connecting rod. That was huge. That was actually my problem to begin with. That's why I was having problems turning it over. I was just, I'd mixed up those caps and I really had tried at the start to keep them right because I kind of knew that, you know, they. I didn't just take them off and mix them up. I knew that they were supposed to go, each, each connecting rod cap was supposed to go to its corresponding connecting rod, but somehow they got, they got mixed up. And mind you, there were parts everywhere. There was engine parts and connecting rods and bearings and whatnot. So I took it apart that second time, got it all apart, got those all matched up, bought a whole nother set of connecting rod bearings, bought a whole nother set of crankshaft bearings and just took my time and put the thing back together and read and followed directions and asked people and just wanted to make sure that it was gonna be perfect this time. So I got the short block all back together. It turned great. Everything was good. Uh, we were on the road to the road to healing. Uh, got the heads back, put the heads on it. Uh, and then went through all the, the valve stuff with the, you know, how to set the rockers uh, put in the, you know, how to, how to put the rollers, uh, the roller rock, uh, the roller push, the, the roller lifters back in, because the LT ones are roller lifters. Uh, you know, you have to soak those in oil. I mean, I just, I went by the book and did everything perfectly. Got the rockers back on. It turned out the rockers were not compatible with my setup. So I had to swap out the, the roller rockers. I got that handled, got everything back together, got the intake on it, I mean, everything was going great. Then came time to reinstall that <laughs> harmonic balancer. And again, going back on, just like before, it's a very specific tool that you need to install it onto this crank. It's, it's actually an LT1 installer. We ended up using 
and I say we, I'm not going to name the person because it was an honest mistake and he's a super good guy, but we ended up using a, a more generic installer to install that balancer. And the person that was helping me just didn't understand like what a bitch these are as far as that balancer goes. So we were trying to spin it on with a generic uh, balancer tool and guess what happened? Do I even need to say it? Broke off the bolt inside the crank. Second one now, right? So the motor was 95% back together. No, it's probably closer to 100% back together. It was sitting right here, ready to go back into the car. And I figured, well, I've removed one of those before. I can do it again. There was no way. There was no way. I, I don't know what happened. I think that it was, it broke off under such tremendous force that it was just seized in there. I used every, I'm pretty good at removing bolts. I've broken bolts. I'm pretty good. I know all the tools. I'm pretty good at, at knowing how to get them out of there. But this one was just, it was not coming out. So what I, what my thought was, was just to try and drill it out and then tap it and, you know, tap it back to seven sixteenths is the size of the, of the bolts, the, the bolt that you use on an LT1, the stock one. Um, tried that, didn't work. And I was kind of out of ideas. I was getting ready to have to buy a crank and put a crank in it. And a good friend of mine, this guy who I keep learning lessons from, said, well, you're not gonna be able to tap that by hand. I mean, it's super hard and steel. Why not just have it done by a machine shop? And I didn't even ever think about doing that, but it made total sense. The only problem with that is you can't just take the engine to the machine shop and say, here, you know, machine, machine my, my, my crank, basically tap it out one size bigger. They weren't gonna be able to do that. I had to take them the crank, which guess what that meant? That meant that the entire motor sitting right here, almost 100% complete, had to be completely disassembled and the crank I would take to the machine shop. It took me a couple of days to get my head around that one, what I was gonna have to do. But I got to the point where, let's get her done and did that, took it all apart. There's a great engine shop here local, fortunately. Wayne Calvert engines. They're awesome. They've been around for years and went in there and told them what I wanted to do. So basically next size up from 7 16 is half inch. Had them tap it up to half inch. And even then, you know, I'm still, I, I've been so battered with this stupid balancer. I just wasn't even sure it was going to work. But my thought was tap it up to half inch and then use a puller to pull it, pull the use a, uh, a puller to pull that balancer back on and then run a half inch bolt and everything would be good. Here's the problem. Not only is the LT1's layout, as I've mentioned, really difficult for a very specific puller. Now I needed a very specific puller, but now I've changed the, the threads to half inch. So a puller does not exist anymore. So I had to make one, and I think I've got it here. Let's take a look. I might have taken it and put it in my Corvette, my Corvette box. Uh, where are you? Every time I look at you, I cringe. Yeah, I, I think I took that. Anyway, what it is, is basically I had to get hardened threaded half inch rod, um, and then some grade eight, nuts and some really crazy washers and had to put what did I do I put the balancer in the oven for like at, at like 300 degrees for like a half an hour had the motor sitting right here and I was just dreading it I just was sure it wasn't going to work because I'd been had my ass kicked so bad by this balancer but it worked I brought it out here it was hot got it on there used my little tool that I made and got that, that balancer on there. What a day that was. That was a great, great day because I knew it was gonna be all downhill from there. And it, it pretty much was, I mean, I've had, some, I've had some issues tuning it. 
I've had some issues that uh, were making the tuning process hard. I went through two tuners. Uh, I think the first tuner I went through, he, you know, it wasn't his fault at all because we were dealing with some other issues that the car was doing, so it was really hard for him to write a tune. Second tuner, I won't get into that. Case is pending. I should slam him on the internet, but I'm not going to do that because, I don't know, I'm over it. But anyway, um, so I got the harmonic balancer back on it, got the motor installed, had to take the hood off, which was a little bit of a dicker. It was easier, easy, easy to get off, but it was difficult to realign it and get it to, to work right, putting it back on. But um, um, so that's where we're at now. So basically after I got it back together, it would run, but it had a terrible off idle stutter. The first tuner, couldn't really figure it out. The second tuner did a little bit better of a job, but we were still having an off idle stutter. And basically what it ended up being, and I'm still got a little bit, but I think it can be tuned out. But basically it was, I think really at this point, what it ended up being was either the, there were leaks at the collectors for the headers and we'll get into those headers in just a minute here, but it was a leak at the collectors a uh, possible vacuum leak at the IAC, which I just discovered yesterday. And I think there was an issue with uh, one of the plug wires that I didn't catch in time. Speaking of that, speaking of the headers, the headers were an absolute nightmare. At this point, I actually wish I, well, I mean, it, it, I've got them solved now, so I'm glad that they're they're on there, but really, if I ever did it again, I would probably just stay with the exhaust manifolds. The headers, these headers cause me so much grief because if you look around or if you know Corvette C4s, you know that headers are really expensive for these cars. They're like two grand, uh, 2,500 bucks. Um, there's just not a, lot, not a lot of demand for them. And if you can even, I don't even know if you can find headers for these cars anymore. So I did eBay headers, which were inexpensive. They were like 600 bucks, but the fab and work to get them to work, I mean, I, I paid, it ended up, I, I, it ended up I, at this point I would have rather just spent the two grand and got better headers. The problem with the, the eBay headers is they're kind of more of a generic. I think they're more for like F body cars of this vintage uh, this one, the left side one, was no, no, no issues, but the right side, bloody hell. The, the problem is, one, they want to contact the upper, they want to contact the A-arm right here, so it needed to be beat down there. Wanted to contact the starter, so it needed to be beat a little bit at the starter, but the big one was right back here. This one was pushing up against right in here, bad. Now, you're looking at a header that has had a lot of modification. Number one, I removed the air system from the top of them. Number two, I had that one about maybe a half, three quarters inch removed from it and then tucked up so that there was more clearance going this way. The problem is more clearance going, or, or less clearance on the inside now makes it so that it's pretty close to the spark plug. In fact, to change that spark plug, which I will never, never have to do again, um, is you have to pull the header, pull it back a little bit to get that spark plug out. And I had to wrap them and I had to put heat stuff here. I mean, it was just a lot of work. And then they were burning through spark plug wires. I was running the incorrect wrap. That's the actual titanium wrap. They call it titanium. It's not titanium, but it's much, much better than the standard exhaust wrap and I've had to learn all this stuff. Um, so, and I wrapped this one, but uh, that was a, out of everything that I had to do on the car, number one, biggest headache, harmonic balancer. Number two, really close, right under it, was those headers, getting those headers to work. Now I kind of understand why on the 94 to 96 cars, there's not a lot of them that have headers. But anyway, uh, so what's been done? Well, Lloyd Elliott heads, LE2 heads, 
um, headers, obviously, cam, uh, bigger injectors, um, new OptiSpark, new wires, obviously new plugs. Uh, what else did I do to it? Deleted the EGR. Uh, bigger valves. The LE2 heads are bigger valves. Roller rockers. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some stuff, but as far as power, I don't know. I mean, out of the box, these are 300 horsepower cars. I think with all my mods, I'm going to be maybe 450. Is that is that too optimistic? 450 horsepower with all those? I don't know. Overall, you know, the car, the rest of the car is just a beautiful, beautiful car. It's only got 50 something thousand miles on it. It's definitely a nine or a nine and a half out of 10. And it had already been pretty well modified, you know, different wheels and stuff when I got it. Uh, if it had been more stock, I probably wouldn't have done what I did to it. But since it was already kind of gone through, um, I figure what the heck and you know what driving them around with 300 horsepower it gets old really quickly I converted everything to LED uh, new new seat covers I mean the car is like in really really good shape I put a 2000 watt sound system in it with a touch screen and backup camera and and tweet I've got Serwin Vega tweeters in the doors bigger speakers here I've got it, it's it sounds nice so it's been quite a journey and you know what I know pretty much every nut and bolt on this car now not not everyone but I know I know every nut and bolt on that engine that's for sure but uh, I know I've learned a lot and yeah I went through some trials and tribulations but when you weigh that with what I've learned and what I know now and the tool that I'm able to add to my toolbox now and the experience and what have you it was worth it. It didn't feel like it at the time, but um, hell of a journey, hell of a journey. And you know, the appreciation for these cars is really starting to grow. Uh, something that's always drawn me to these cars is they were such a huge groundbreaking car when they came out in 1984. And I really can't think of another car gas powered I mean let's be honest when the Teslas came out Tesla was just an incredible thing in the automotive world like them or hate them they were they were a big milestone in the automotive world the Corvette C4 though coming out in 1984 it was a huge huge thing I mean they were so ahead of their time they featured so much in innovation and mind you the 84 was only like 205 horsepower is the crossfire motor that carried over from the previous generation and it was only in 84, 85 they went to the tune port. But just the the handling, I mean, they out-handled everything up until that point, at least in an American car. I think the, I remember the big deal was they pulled 1G on the skid pad. They just looked like they were from outer space. They had this clamshell hood and the way the lights popped up. I mean, they were amazing. So yeah, it's an old Corvette. It's what, four generations old now, but I, I really, I've always liked the C4s. Uh, when I was detailing cars in the late 80s and 90s, you know, I loved doing these cars. I got to drive them around a little bit because my customers owned them. But I was always a huge fan of these cars. Not so much a fan of the C5. I really like the C6. I really like the C6 Z06. Uh, C7s are decent and I've rented C8s. And I, I like the C8 too. Uh, it's just a little bit out of my budget right now, but anyway, yeah, it's been it's been one heck of a journey with this car, and I don't know how long I'm going to keep it. When I do sell it, it's going to be an incredible car for someone because I mean, new tires, new brakes, new everything. Motor's basically brand new. Everything's sealed, doesn't leak anything. Handles awesome. The 94 through 90, actually the 95 and the 96 GM really did their best to address the rattles and squeaks. So. They have a lot more padding and insulation and anti-squeak stuff than the the previous cars did, but uh, yeah, it's been it's been quite a ride. So anyway, that's that. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching this long ass video. Um, if you have any questions about the C4, I know a good guy. I know a guy. 
that you can call and ask. Feel free to message me or send me a, send me a message in the comments or reach out to me and, uh, and, and, and that'll be that. So anyway, all right guys, thanks for tuning in. Take care.